Welcome again, everybody. I'm Zoltan Lehotsky. I'm from Long Beach Technologies Limited. Uh, my colleague here, uh, Zsolt Benedek Farkas, is also from the same company. We are, um, we are currently focusing on, on uh, web application development with the open source Orchard Content Management Framework. And now this Orchard Content Management Framework will be the topic of our subject. So we will talk about web development, of course, in this uh, Orchard Content Management Framework. But this also means that we will explore areas of, uh, of web development generally. We will explore areas of software development and C-sharp programming generally. Uh, we will see some industry best practices. We will also brief briefly talk about how to work in a team on a software development project. Because as you, as you may know, uh, because it's in the, uh, in the syllabus of the course, you will have to provide a project work till the end of the semester. We will, um, we will give you details about that, how to specifically uh, provide the project work to us. But the, the aim of the subject is, that till the end, you will be able to produce a, a real world web application whether it's a website, a portal, or a, a web-based game, or something else, it can be anything you decide, but this should be the product of the course for you. And we will work on that uh, together, that you will be able to reach that. Uh, so let's see, and we really hope that everybody will be able to, uh, to take away something very useful, and then you will be able to use it in real world projects because this is not something academic this is very practical it uh, it's only uh, only worth it if you can use it later on so let's see what we'll talk about first of all what's this orchard and what's this asp.net whatever what will uh, be the topic of the course now this is the orchard homepage Orchard is a content management system, but we rather want to call it, or we, ra we rather like to call it content management framework. Why? Because it's a content management system. That means it's a web application that you can use to quickly build websites and, and add content to those websites. It gives you many features, like, uh, like the basic content management features. You can write pages, blog posts, it handles user management, it handles media management, all kinds of everyday tasks that, that you encounter when developing a website. So if you want to create a new website, building on top of a CMS is a good choice because you have all kinds of features that you otherwise would have to develop yourself. Uh, on the other hand, Orchard is a framework, a web application from framework, and it's, it's very strong on this. Uh, actually, it, uh, now is the time that it becomes more mature from the uh, user experience kind of perspective. Before that, it was more developer oriented or more friendly to developers. So it's a very nice framework, a ni very nice uh, web application framework written in C Sharp. It builds on the .NET web stack, so it's um, it builds on on the ASP.NET MVC framework that in turn builds on the ASP.NET uh, web framework. So that means if you know ASP.NET MVC or at least the MVC paradigm, you can uh, more or less quickly begin to develop for Orchard because Orchard it builds on ASP.NET MVC. So you could, you could theoretically uh, almost write pure MVC projects inside Orchard, but that wouldn't be much of a use, of course. So if you learn a bit more, you learn a bit uh, what Orchard can provide on top of ASP.NET MVC, how it enriches ASP.NET MVC, you can achieve much more. Uh, during the course, first course, first we will, uh, we will see how Orchard works from a user's perspective. So we will see how to uh, do the basic content management tasks. And then 
from the third fourth lesson we will start developing for our child. So we will write code in Visual Studio that will be C Sharp or Razor. Uh, as you may know, Razor is the the almost C Sharp template language uh, that that's quite coupled with ESP.NET MVC projects. It's very popular templating language in ESP.NET MVC projects, and Orchard also uses it. So we will develop uh, with these tools. So uh, what do we have to do if we want to get to know Orchard? First of all, here's the Orchard homepage, orchardproject.net uh, is the URL. This is, <coughs> this is really the hub of everything that happens around Orchard. Um, of course, this is just a website, so we won't get to um, learn it, but just so you know, here it is. Uh, it's worth noting that um, that the latest news all around the Orchard ecosystem, including third-party blog posts, are listed on the front page. Here is a blog post from, uh, from everybody who is involved in Orchard, and also the latest podcasts, because there are weekly community meetings, and these are recorded. Because Orchard is a community-driven and open-source project. Now, what does this mean? It's community-driven. That means that basically every decision is made by the community. There is uh, no company behind Orchard pushing it forward into that direction. If you are a community member and everybody is a community member who uses Orchard and wants to contribute to it, wants to uh, let their voice heard, if you are a community member, you can, uh, you can vote on things. You can, you can push the project into a direction you would like to see it go. You can you can propose features, you can file bug reports, whatever, because it's, it's community driven, you decide. And it's also open source, so that means you can see the full, full source code of Orchard. You can modify it, you can go through it and learn through it, because it's very useful if you, f if you see a big project, a big, well done uh, project that has quality code, and you go through it, you can learn a lot. Orchard is very good for this, uh, for, for learning how to do software development well. And, and it's of course free, so it's open source. You have the source, you can do whatever you want. There is no commercial license, you don't have to buy anything. Now, this is the project homepage, but probably more interesting or, or something you would like to see more is, is the CodePlex site. Uh, it's reachable from here. So here you see Orchard Codeplex website. Uh, this is the the central hub of the of the development side of Orchard. So this is, uh, if you may know, Codeplex is something like uh, GitHub or Bitbucket. So there are code repositories and uh, little communities around projects. So on the Orchard website. Uh, we are at the CodePlex site, we have some uh, notable things. First of all, discussions. If you have any questions regarding Orchard, ask it here. The whole community is here and they may help you. If you have questions that you uh, want to ask during this course, you can ask them here too. So please ask them here, not, uh, not uh, don't ask them uh, as directly, but prefix your your threads if you open a discussion with Dojo course. So we will keep an eye on those discussions and we will chime in uh, as soon as possible. So please ask questions here. If you have found any any bug, any issue with Orchard, go to issues and file a new report, a new issue report. So if you create a new issue, okay, I have to log in, whatever. Here is, for example, uh, another issue. Uh, an issue report is either a bug report, so something is not working in Orchard, or a feature request, for example. So again, Orchard is community driven. If you want to have something, open uh, an issue about it, and it will be evaluated. And probably some, somebody will also implement it. But you too can implement it, since it's open source. So it's, uh, it's not like commercial software. It's, it's very open, 
and it very de very much depends on the community. If you are a developer, uh, you have to use the source code of Orchard. Because as a developer, you want to have, <coughs> sorry, you want to have access to the source code. You want to go through the source code and really see what the project is about. Now go to the source code and download it. This is the latest source, but if you want to download the latest release source, just go to downloads and download the Orchard source. Uh, you could also download the web project. We won't much bother us with the web, uh, web package. Uh, for developers, the source is the way to go. So if you try Orchard at home, download the source. From the next course on, we will uh, exclusively deal with the source. <coughs> so that's the Orchard okay, ecosystem, or, or the most of it. There are also community sites, by the way. And so if we go back to the Orchard website, <coughs> you can see that, uh, <coughs> that there are local com communities. So there is, there is even a Hungarian website. <coughs> uh, but that said, uh, let's go to, to try out Orchard. So how it works. Uh, what's the ins and outs as, as a user? What do you have to know as a user about Orchard? Because that's just what's around it. But we haven't used Orchard yet. Now, uh, unfortunately, we have some technical difficulties in this room. So, uh, only this lesson. You won't be able to try this on your, uh, on your student machines. If you have a laptop here, you can do the same because you can, uh, there you can install things. Install software. But um, here you don't have administrator account, so you won't be able to install anything. So sorry about that. <coughs> we will just demonstrate everything for now. But coming to the ne next lesson, you will have a Visual Studio uh, 2012 on your machines, and everything will work. <coughs> uh, what we use now is Web Matrix. Web Matrix is a it's a neat little software. Uh, let me go to the front page, yes. <coughs> now, Web Matrix is, uh, is a small web development tool. We won't bother much about much uh, with Web Matrix because we will use uh, Visual Studio and, uh, and the hardcore uh, development tools. But for this, this uh, lesson, we will, <coughs> we will take a look about, uh, at Web Matrix. Uh, we will install Orchard in with WebMatrix because it's uh, very easy to install it through WebMatrix and we will, we will run it from here. So if you would like to just show somebody Orchard or, or just very quickly try it out, install WebMatrix, it's free. <coughs> just uh, search for it on the internet, you can download it. And once you have it here, you can install Orchard from the gallery, uh, like following, uh, click new, we have an app gallery. Orchard is, a, is an application that's uh, accessible from WebMatrix. Uh, you can see there are many applications, inclu <coughs> including uh, other CMSs, but we will uh, use Orchard CMS now, of course. Uh, let's call the site uh, Dojo Course Demo Site. <coughs> and if we click Next, yeah, we will. Uh, we know what Orchard CMS is about. So next again, we accept the terms, of course, and Orchard will be downloaded and installed here. So we don't have to install any server. We don't even need Visual Studio on this machine. It is installed, but we don't uh, need it. We can just run Orchard from this web matrix. All right. Okay, it was successful. <coughs> and it also starts the site at once. So back to WebMatrix, we have this uh, little control panel uh, once we have uh, installed Orchard. 
Um, nothing really uh, special here or nothing really interesting because it's, it's quite simple here and we uh, really won't bother much with web matrix. One thing to note here is the database uh, tab or menu. Uh, that isn't showing the, the, <laughs> the database of the demo side because it's not yet there. We don't have a database because first we need to install Orchard. So let's do that first. Our site has uh, already started. It automatically starts if you install it through Web Matrix. And this is the first screen you will see when starting Orchard. Um, anybody has installed any CMSs? Uh, whether it was PHP or anything else. Well, yes, what was it? Which CMS? The, it was Orchard. <laughs> okay, so you are already familiar with the screen. And, and Joomla. And Joomla. Yeah, I, I don't know about Joomla, but uh, um, there are some other CMSs that have a very similar uh, install screen. It's very simple, so really nothing to tell. Well, First, we have to fill out the name of the site, so that will be Dojo Course Demo Site again. Uh, username is admin, password is password, because we want to live on the edge. And uh, this is something now more interesting. Orchard's data storage is abstracted, so you will never interact as a developer. You will never interact with SQL directly because um, there's an SQL, da SQL database behind Orchard. Uh, uh, I almost say naturally, but now it's not natural uh, anymore to have a database only as SQL, uh, because we have many no SQL alternatives, of course. But Orchard uses SQL. There is an SQL server in the background, but it's abstracted away. Um, it uses, by the way, the nHibernate object relational mapping layer but we won't interact with that either. So it's, it's again abstracted away. Uh, but interesting now, however, that we can choose from multiple database providers. So uh, Orchard can uh, also use SQL Compact, so that's the first option we have here. SQL Server Compact is uh, just a database file. So the whole database will be, will be stored in a single file inside the Orchard folder. Um, and that's it. It's very lightweight. It's very simple. If you want to to move your orchard orchard source away, because I don't know you want to move it to another uh, another computer, you can just copy the folder because it includes the uh, the SQL uh, Server database as well. It's very simple, but it's uh, it's mostly meant for development purposes and very small traffic websites. If your website is, uh, is m more than, than just a few pages, due to performance reasons, it's, uh, it's advised to use a full-blown SQL Server version. But SQL Server Compact works well. Uh, yeah, so for now we will use it. Uh, but you can use a full SQL Server, of course. For that you will need a connection string. Or you can use uh, MySQL. It's uh, also supported now. Uh, probably, probably in the future we will have uh, more providers. But for now, that's, uh, that's kind of enough. So we will use uh, SQL Server Compact. And the next question is to choose a recipe. Now, what is a recipe? You can see there are um, three options. We can choose default blog or core. Uh, this is extensible, so what we see here is just the uh, default, what's, what's in the default package. A recipe is basically a, a state of the Orchard website. It's an exported uh, version of what an Orchard website contains. It can contain settings, any kind of configurational data, and content. So, um, more or less, you can export an Orchard website into an XML file, and then from that, uh, initialize a new website, and it will contain the same configuration, the same content. These recipes here uh, don't really contain content, just the default one contains some example content, 
but it's more for configuration purposes. So if you chose default, uh, you will have uh, default websites with some test content. So let's choose default and continue with the setup. It's cooking the orchard recipe. It will take a few seconds, but after that we will see how an orchard website looks. Mm. Now it's in the background, it's creating the database. Um, I think it's also doing some compiling probably, but I'm not, uh, not sure about that. But definitely it's creating the database and it, it initializes the site from the default recipe. So it's here. Um, that's what you see after running the demo recipe. Uh, you can see it's, it's almost nothing. It's really just test content. And this is the front page. Uh, we have some content here already. So this here, for example, a page. This here is a widget. Uh, this is a widget as well, and this is a widget too. And this is the menu. Well, not much here, of course. So we will have to do something. Yeah, and by the way, by default, uh, Orchards, Orchard comes with the theme machine theme. Uh, so that's what we see here. Uh, the theme is, is how the website is skinned. So we will talk about themes and other kinds of extensions that you can use to extend the functionality of Orchard later on. Themes are, yeah, how you skin your website. And the default one is the theme machine. And it also comes with this Powered by Orchard uh, um, signing. Uh, it's it's very funny because uh, by by just googling this string here, this text here, you can get a uh, very crude ex approximation of how many orchard sites are there. Because this is uh, most of the time this is left here. So let's do something with this. First of all, we are logged in. Uh, so we used admin as a username and password as a password. But if we click here. Uh, we can change the password. So that's probably the first thing you would like to do if you have your password as password, because that's not very secure. We can sign out, of course. Uh, but what's more interesting is the dashboard. Uh, by default, here's the dashboard link. The dashboard is the admin area of Orchard. So we call it dashboard, but it's, it's the admin side. So this is the backend. What we can see here is the, is the environment where you can modify everything that's on the site. There are a lot of things, a lot of menu items, a lot of widgets here, well, almost widgets, a lot of text, so it, it looks a bit uh, too much, uh, I guess, at once, uh, but we will get used to it. First of all, uh, our website now has uh, the name uh, Dojo Course Demo Website. Um, let's go inside settings and change that because that's, that's not very catchy. Let's call it just Dojo Course Site, so not without demo. How we do, do that? You, you, can, uh, you can freely explore these uh, menu items here. We will take a look at some of them. But probably the, the most important one is the settings. Uh, the settings here. It's also, uh, it also has uh, sub-items. But if you just click on settings, you will go to the general settings of the site. Nothing really complicates it here. So we have here the site name. So if we change that, just go to your course site and click save here. Now, now our site's name is, uh, is changed. Oh, wonderful, everything works. At least this works. Um, we have some other configuration options here. Uh, take your time to just quickly uh, discover them, but uh, most of them are quite simple. I would like to know this uh, site culture here. As you can see by default is, is the US culture. Orchard is localizable. That means that you can have the site, have the same site with different, uh, uh, with, with content of different languages. 
you could we could set up here HU uh, HU so the Hungarian culture for example we could um, we could install the localization package for the Hungarian language and then and everything would be Hungarian here uh, we will also see that uh, the time zone is also configurable yeah page title separator super user these are quite self-explanatory while the super user is is the atomist admin user of course mm. these are just the basic settings but uh, probably the first thing you would like to explore in the backend uh, anybody with any questions till now okay, it was quite basic I know but this was probably the first part um, nothing all right great then I think we could go on but probably after a short break yeah because we would dive in into content management it's a basic content management task and what and we would like to explore what really makes Orchard uh, very flexible and that's the content model we will explore that next after the break so we will have a short five minute break now uh, please uh, come back on time and we will go on with, uh, with how to create pages, blog posts, how to deal with users and probably widgets as well. Alright, so let's continue with um, some basic content management and um, how the user, uh, uh, user management and, and the dashboard works. Um, Let's talk about first what is the Orchard content model, why is it the content management system and why is it of course a, a development framework, but that's a later topic. So now we, we look into the content management. Um, so basically everything is around content in Orchard. This means that you can, uh, you can edit the, the uh, already existing content uh, types, which is a terminology here. So you can edit the already existing content types and uh, create new ones. So basically content type is a blueprint for your data. You can define what kind of data you would, you would like to store in one piece, uh, but you can break it down to smaller parts. That is, that is called uh, very simply content parts. So content part is, um, is a smaller set of functionalities where you can store, for example, uh, very uh, simple data from, from integers to pictures so it can be very simple, it can be very complex. You decide, you, you can define what kind of uh, blueprint um, you want to store. <coughs> also another uh, terminology here is uh, sort of um, a smaller uh, atom in this system is the content field. The content field is really much more simpler. Um, basically it breaks down to integer strings, um, drop down lists, um, media items and things like that. And you can organize these fields into parts, and you can uh, select these parts and add them to different content types. So you can create a tree of, of the data you want to store and uh, uh, put it into different little pieces and put them together. You can uh, reuse them anytime you want. So this means that um, when you create, when you define a content part which stores a, a specific set of features, uh, set of data, you can reuse them for different content types. So uh, basically, uh, when we see in the development part, uh, everything is about extensibility and reusability in Orchard. So if you have a piece of code, you don't, uh, you don't have to recode it and uh, to, to use it again. You can always uh, use the existing, uh, existing features, existing parts. So Basically, that's what's great about Orchard, that if you, if you have done something or uh, someone else did something uh, very useful, um, then you can reuse it again anytime. Um, so uh, let's see how this works. We have, an, uh, we have a menu item here called content definitions. So uh, we have two uh, menu items here. It's called the local navigation. Um, we have content types and content parts. So these are the default content types in the system. Um, we have from very simple ones like a comment to little more uh, difficult ones like the projection widget, we'll, be, uh, we'll discuss the, these uh, later on. So 
And if you go to content path, these are so smaller set of, uh, set of functionalities, but uh, you may notice that most of the content parts have very similar or the same names as content types. So this is not a coincidence because um, the default content types in the system have a certain functionality and uh, the content part that, that basically defines this functionality has the same name as the content type. But if you want to extend these content types, uh, for example, you want to uh, attach uh, music videos to every page in the system, you can do that. Uh, but the default content part for that specific type is just the, the default set of functionality. And of course, we have also content fields too. So um, basically, the uh, most useful demo is to create a new content type and see how it works. Um, let's say, uh, and I think it's a new feature, and I hope this is already in integrated into this version, but if I search on a content type less for, I don't know, dojo, then I will see that there is no uh, result for that, but if I click create type, oh, it's not integrated. Anyway, uh, I can type dojo here, and, I, and this will create a new content type called dojo. And this is the list of the available content parts in the system, but of course, uh, you can write your own modules uh, that will define new content parts. Uh, or you can download any of the, of the existing modules that have, def uh, that have any uh, content parts in them, and you can reuse those, of course. So let's say I want to store some title and, and some text. So the body part, which is basically a, a visible editor, and the title part, which is basically just a string, a title. I'm going to select these. So, um, oh, I didn't select body. Anyway, I, I'm, ju I'm ju going to store uh, uh, a title here. So, as you notice, there is one here I didn't select. It's a common part. Uh, and as, the, as its name says, it's, it's uh, storing common data, for example, who is the user who created the content item, uh, what was the creation date, and things like that. And it has uh, some settings, but these are self-explanatory, so I won't uh, go, in, go in them. Um, for a content type, I can also add uh, fields, not just parts. So let's see, these are the, the existing fields in the system. For example, I can store a boolean, which will, which will be represented by a checkbox. I can have a content picker field, uh, which will uh, add a functionality with, uh, uh, with what I can uh, select another content item and create relationships between content items. Uh, and I, th I, didn't, I don't think I made this uh, clear, but basically a content item is an instantiated uh, content type. So I have the types, the parts, and the fields, and when I uh, instantiate a content, a content type, it will be a content item. And um, uh, like I said, as opposed to, for example, WordPress, where you have uh, uh, an already defined set of, of uh, content types, and you cannot really modify them. These are all uh, extensible and editable. Um, so let's just leave it, leave it, uh, leave it uh, with that. Um, basically, the content type editor is, is very simple and self-explanatory. So I'm not going to save that because you don't really need this one. The next thing about, next thing about uh, content types and content items is uh, a terminology called versioning, which will mean that um, there's a specific uh, setting for, for the content types, and let's see page because that's the uh, simplest uh, example. So if you go to content type uh, editor, you see there's a, a setting here called createable and draftable. Now createable uh, is basically an administration page feature. This will mean that uh, this content type will appear here under the new uh, items. So I just click on that and that will, I can create a, a, a new content item immediately of that type. Draftable uh, means, as the description says, that uh, this content type supports draft versions. This means that I can save a content, I content item, but I don't necessarily want to um, uh, publish it immediately, but basically it's a, it's a default feature for every content item, but I can create different versions of it. This means that I have a page, I had created it already, uh, I can save it and publish it, so uh, let's do that, because that's the demo is, is most uh, convenient here. So I'm going to create a test page, 
Uh, I'm going to set a home page just to see that it, it's created. And I'm going to publish it. So if I go to the main, uh, go to the uh, uh, home page, I'm going to see that my page became the home page. This is a simple setting, uh, and the content is here. So if I go back to the dashboard, I can edit uh, the already existing content items under content. Now, if I go to uh, edit, uh, I can add other content here. For example, uh, we are testing in production. So um, basically, this is a change I don't want to expose immediately to the outside, but I, I can save it. So if I don't, I don't click uh, publish now, only save, this will mean that if I open the home page, the uh, previous content will still be dis uh, displayed. Um, so versioning means that uh, there are basically two different versions in the system of this, of this page. One of them is uh, one of them is published and is displayed. The other one is already saved, but I, I don't necessarily want to uh, display it immediately. And as you can see, there are other options here. Uh, under preview, I can see the latest version, which already shows the the modifications I made. And I can of, of course show uh, the, uh, I can click on publish draft, which means that the latest draft version will be published. And if I uh, publish it, I'm going to go back. Uh, to the home page, and we'll see that the uh, text is appear. It has appeared here. Okay, so basically that's about uh, drafts and versioning. Um, another thing next to these is uh, that I can delete uh, content items. Now, this is an interesting uh, feature because if I click on delete, this will just disappear. And uh, but these these uh, data will, won't be de deleted from the database. So this means that delete is really a soft delete, rather. Um, so they can be restored actually, but uh, due to some um, well requirements, um, these items are not deleted permanently. So actually, they remain in the system, but one but you won't see them uh, on the admin page. So. Basically, that's about content. Um, feel free to explore it, or really, I encourage you to explore it because uh, these are very basic uh, functionalities in the system. And since um, everything is really related to content in Orchard, more or less, um, every time you develop something with Orchard, you develop your own module, uh, they will, uh, well, in 90% will be connected to some content management too. So for example, you will create content items and, and uh, skin some editors for your customers, for example. OK, um, other interesting things here. Uh, there are uh, basic content types, as I said, in the system that you can uh, fiddle with. Um, there are blogs, comments, uh, taxonomies, which are for categories. Um, they are really simple features and self-explanatory editors, so uh, just explore them in, uh, in private. Uh, due to the uh, lack of time, I'm not going to go into details with them, but they are really easy to use. So the next thing about uh, customizing your own website is uh, downloading or actually writing, which we are going to later. But you can also download other uh, modules from the gallery. Uh, there is one uh, central gallery uh, related to Orchard, this is uh, the Orchard Gallery. So this is reachable at gallery.orchardproject.net. Uh, so this is, uh, oh, we are near 5 million downloads here. That's, that's cool. So um, this is part of the Orchard ecosystem. Uh, every, basically every module that is available, well, most of them are, ava are ava available on the gallery. So you can create your own packages from your source code and upload it here. So the users uh, will be able to see it. Uh, another cool feature is that the gallery itself is a module. So you can have your own Orchard installation with your own gallery. So let's say you have some private modules at your company, for example, you can create a private gallery for the, for the employees of the company. And they can, they, uh, only they can see it and download modules from this. So we have two main categories uh, here. One of them is modules. The other one is teams. Um, so basically, module is a, a set of functionality you want to, you want to code. Uh, team is really the, the skin 
or the look and feel of your website. Uh, and of course, the, the handling of modules and themes is a basic feature and they are enabled by default. So let's see how they work. So um, if you go to the modules menu item, you will see this nice list. And uh, <coughs> you, you can see here the already enabled, uh, the already available features in the system. Some of them are disabled, some of them are enabled. Now, uh, why am I talking about features and not modules? Because this is the modules menu. Um, so basically, a module is a whole bunch of functionalities, and you can break those down into separate features. Uh, so let's say I want to uh, develop something really big into one module, but I can, I can uh, separate uh, different functionalities into different uh, features, and I can disable and enable them separately. And this is a very, very useful thing, of course. Um, under the installed menu item, I can see the actual modules installed. Uh, and you can uh, run recipes uh, from modules. So basically one, one uh, uh, developer tool in Orchard is that uh, you can define uh, recipes in your modules. So let's say you want to create some test data uh, for, for your module that you can start with. You can create a recipe in your, inside your module and then you can execute this recipe. So when you install the module, you can have some basic uh, starting content. And of course, if you go to gallery, you can install uh, modules directly from Orchard. So one way is that you, for example, search for, search for some module, and then you can download the package and copy it into your Orchard uh, folder. The other more simple solution is that you search for a module. Let's say, um, let's uh, see Google, yeah, just Google. I think Google Analytics will appear here, yes. So, um, what you can do here is search for a module and then you can install or download it. If you click on download, you, you basically just get the package. It's the same as if you did it on the website. If you click on install, and hopefully this will work with administration privileges included, um, this module will be downloaded and installed here. So I'm, I don't need to do anything else with it other than just enable it if I want to. And yes, of course, I want to enable this module. So what I did here is that I visited the modules uh, menu and, uh, and installed the module from the gallery. Um, as we uh, discussed earlier, Orchard is hosted on Coplex, so basically you can have your source code so hosted somewhere, and uh, if you are developing a custom solution, uh, it's much more, uh, it's a much more complex thing how you, how you manage your modules, but if you uh, want to make it easier for regular users to download it, you should, of course, upload your module uh, to the gallery. So they can be installed easily. And um, that's about modules. Let's see what we have under Teams. So if I visit the Teams menu, we have uh, a little bit similar thing here. Uh, it works in a, in a very similar way, so I can see what, ki what uh, mo uh, teams are installed already, and of course I can access the gallery. This time I'm going to be able to browse the, the, uh, the, mod the teams, not the modules. And another notable thing is that, uh, as you can see if we visit the modules, uh, you can see that some of, the, some of these has some dependencies. We are going to these in detail later when we are developing actual modules, but a notable thing is that uh, things and modules can have dependencies, which means if, you're, if you write uh, a module or a feature that uses some other functionalities from, from a different module, you can define a, a dependency. So uh, they will be automatically uh, enabled if they are available. Um, so that's about uh, themes and modules. Uh, let's see some uh, more serious stuff about the, the dashboard and the administration uh, functionalities of Orchard. We're going to see how users work. We can assign uh, roles for these users. We can create them and of course edit existing roles. Uh, so, let's see, so let's see how that works. Uh, if you go to the users menu here, uh, you see that uh, we have two local navigation tabs here. One of them is users, uh, the other one is roles. So, uh, because the installation requires one user to be created, well, that's basically a normal thing for any system. We have an administration user here. So, if I'm going to, uh, if I go to the edit, 
um, you see that the admin user is actually not an administrator. Now this is an interesting thing because the first user that is created in the system is a special user. This is called a super user. And as you can see, the admin, the only user here in the system, is a super user, which means that he's basically the god in this system. He can do everything. Or she, he or she can do everything. Uh, this can be changed, of course. So that's why the, this user doesn't need any specific roles because uh, his, uh, the administration, the admin user is a super user. Um, a notable uh, feature here, of course, is, is I can create users here. Uh, so the, those users that have the access rights to create other users can do this and assign all the available roles to them. Uh, but if, uh, if you, let's say, disable the users module, which you can do, but technically it would be possible if you, for example, delete it, um, this user's uh, submenu item under settings would disappear. So this means that if you have your own module, you can uh, define your own settings for it, and uh, that's another useful thing all about extensibility, of course. So as you can see, if you visit the user settings, um, the checkbox for uh, creating new, new accounts is disabled. Of course, it's a very simple thing. You can just enable it if you want. Um, let's go back to users. So um, let's say, uh, well, I, I would rather enable it. So I will enable uh, users to register on the site. So I'm going to do a quick demo with it. I, if I go to sign in, uh, this text is, uh, is going to appear here, register if you don't have an account. If I disable user registration, it won't be uh, displayed, of course. So let's say I'm going to create a new use, user, Ooh, different keyboard, and let's say password is a password, because as Zoltan usually says, we like to live on the edge. So I have a new um, user. It's called Dojo, and as you can see, dashboard link is not present here. Why is that? Because it's just a regular user with the authenticated role, which means he can, he or she can log in, but that's all. He can access the content and things like that. If I sign back with, sign in back with administrator, is it password? Yes. Okay, I just made a typo, okay. So I, if I go back to dashboard, I can see uh, that under users, I have a new user here. Well, it's what we expected, actually. Uh, I, if I go to edit, I can, ex uh, I can uh, assign different roles to this user. So let's say um, this user is an administrator, too. If I save uh, and log out and back in, I'm going to see the dashboard is present here. So this will mean that this user has very similar privileges uh, as the admin user, almost everything, but not a super user, but an administrator. So basically from now on I can, I can edit these settings. Um, so let's see what, when, what we can do about uh, different roles. So these are the, the default roles in the system. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are seven of these by default, but I could only apply five of them to different users. Um, well, this is because they are special. Um, one of them is authenticated. It will really, really self-explanatory. If I'm logged in, I'm an authenticated user. Anonymous is another uh, specific, uh, another um, special role in the system. Uh, this is for not authenticated users. So let's see, let's say, um, Anonymous user uh, can access the site content by default. This means that if I'm not logged in, I can see the pages, blogs, things like that. Um, as you can see, these permissions are break down into, into features. Now, this means that for your modules and the features in them, you can decide what type of uh, functionalities the, the users in that role can, uh, can uh, reach. So, for example, uh, this is a very silly thing, so never <laughs> you shouldn't do this ever in production. But I could say anonymous users can apply a theme. Now this is very strange, but this would mean that every user that has even uh, hasn't even logged in can change the theme in the in, can change the theme in the system. Now uh, this is very dangerous, but that's a possibility. 
So, um, as you can see, uh, access site front end is allowed for un unauthenticated users. This means that he or she can see the pages. So, if I uncheck this and save, uh, this will mean that if I access uh, this page, of course, I'm logged in, and even Dojo user is, a, is an administrator, so I can do everything with it. But if I sign out, I won't be able to access anything on this site, only the logon page. Now, this will this means that since uh, unauthenticated users cannot access the site front end, and well, nothing else, um, nothing else either. Uh, I I have to log in uh, to be able to see the pages, and so. I'm just going to log back in. So this is a very useful feature uh, for managing your user, users and roles, and um, this means that um, you can you can provide a set of functionalities and and predefined uh, uh, rules for your website without coding anything. So uh, a lot of things has been done before us and coded before us. So uh, we have we have a, a great set of features to use um, without, without coding anything. So regular users, non-technical person, uh, persons can, can use Orchard as well for administration tasks. But let's sum up what, what we have done here. Um, we have visited the dashboard and uh, we looked into the content management part of the system. We looked into the, develop, the software development and, and web development framework part of the system later on. So <coughs> basically, uh, content is the most central thing in Orchard. Um, there are a great set of uh, content types uh, defined in the system. You can edit these, create your own, ad, uh, and uh, do basically anything with them if you're an administrator using in, in that system, of course. Uh, content uh, types are a blueprint of, of your functionalities and data you want to you want to use, you want to uh, expose to the, to the outside. Um, they can be uh, divided into sub set of uh, features. They are called content parts. You can do uh, basically any, any type of task with them. Uh, if, you, if you code a little bit, if you're on the, on the administration page and you are not a technical person, uh, you are of course limited in these uh, functionalities, but Orchard offers um, very useful things for, for non-technical person people too. So content part is a, is a sub set of features, and of course uh, they are a little bit uh, smaller parts in the system, they are called content fields, so they are really just, just basic data, and well, they can be a little more complex than for example an integer or a, or a boolean, but they are the smallest part in the system. So you can, you can break down your content into parts and then fields, and you can uh, create your own uh, content types. If you instantiate, for example, a content type, this will be a content item, uh, and you can do different things with it, edit, display, um, and, and uh, create drafts with it. So uh, like I said, uh, the versioning means that you, you can save different versions of the same content item in the system. You can decide which one to be uh, displayed, for example, for, for the user. And you can also delete these items, but uh, it's, it's notable that this uh, delete uh, functionality is really a soft delete. So the data itself will be remain in the system. Uh, well, there's a good reason for that. It's data consistency. So let's say you have uh, you have your, you have your data in in uh, different places in the database. So if you want to delete a content item, you may need this content item later on with with other content items. If you have, for example, um, uh, relationships between content items, of course this would be bro broken if you delete it or annihilate it completely from the database. So that's why deleting is rather a soft delete. Okay, so um, as I, uh, like I said, if you download the web or source package, you have a great uh, deal of uh, modules already present, um, and uh, most of them are just basic, basic features, like for example, blogging, writing, uh, creating pages, uh, writing comments for these pages or blog posts and things like that. But there are other, uh, other more complex features which we'll, which we'll look into uh, later on. These are, for example, the navigation, the workflows, um, 
and and uh, and the projections and queries and things like that. So they are other more complex uh, features. Uh, they would uh, they well they usually require little little more knowledge of Orchard, um, but they are easy to use as well. So <coughs> you can create content items, you can version them, and self delete them. Um, if you want to extend your system, you can create your own modules, which we'll do later uh, in the semester. But you can also download uh, modules from the gallery. You can also uh, download themes from the gallery. So you can customize the look and feel uh, of your website and also add or remove functionalities from it. So that's another useful feature in the, in the Orchard Gallery. Um, and of course, we have um, users, roles, and permissions, which is a uh, very uh, uh, basic uh, thing for, for a content management system. So you can assign uh, roles to the users, you can assign permissions to the, to the roles, and you can edit these uh, permissions uh, to, to be able to control what uh, users can reach and what they cannot do. Um, any questions about these features? Any, anything that is not clear? Okay, it seems to me that it's all right. So uh, what we have seen now was uh, really basic content management and basic site management. We will now go into a bit uh, more detailed versions. More specifically, what we will do now is uh, uh, we will edit widgets. So if we go back to the front end, uh, we can see this here. As Benedek has explore, uh, explained, this is our page here. But um, normally content items are meant to, or, or just general content items are meant to uh, well, be on a whole page. So the whole page is a content item. If you, if you want to view a page like this here, you open it and, and it's there and nothing Nothing else that really matters is on the same uh, HTML side, but just just that that page. Now there are separate uh, kinds of contents that you want to be displayed on every page, uh, and these are widgets. So what we have here, um, as I mentioned earlier, these are widgets. So widgets are again content items. So Almost everything that you interact with from the admin side is uh, is a content item in Orchard. Widgets are content items as well. Now, why is this good? That that everything is, is content item, because content content items are very flexible, as Benedek has explained. So we can reuse pieces of functionality. We can re reuse the same pieces of functionality for pages, for example, and widgets. So let's see what these uh, widgets do here and how what they have in common with pages, for, ex for example. So let's see where these are. We go back to the admin side and you see here that we have the widgets uh, menu item. This, this looks a bit uh, complicated now because uh, we, uh, we will have to get to know uh, also some other notions here, some other terminology, but first not bother with anything else here, but let's go down to first leader side. Now, this is the same here. So you can see here's the title, first leader side. That's the same here. So this should be this widget. If we go to its editor, we can see something similar that we have seen uh, with the page. So again, it's an editor. Now, before we dive into the details, what uh, uh, everything here means, I would like uh, you to notice something. We have the body here. So this here is the body text. This is a rich text box. Uh, in the end, it's HTML. And it's the body text. If we create a new page, or edit a page, or any way, uh, if we open the editor of the page, we have the same body here. 
So this here, this rich text box is the body. And this here in the, on the widgets editor is the same body. So we have a piece of functionality, a piece of content, the body, the body text that's common. Now, how is it achieved? Um, let's uh, go back just to rehearse it again because it's, it's, it's the core of Orchard, so it's crucial that you get to know it. If we go back to content definitions and we take a look at page, we see the body here, it's under parts. So we have the body part attached to the page content type. So as Benedek has explained, the content type is the page and we have the body part attached. And if we search for widgets, uh, there are a few content types of widget as you can see, but uh, what we have seen before happens to be an HTML widget. If we, if we click on that and see its content type editor, we have the same body here. So why is this great? This is great because you can write a single piece of functionality like the body. You can uh, write its editor, how is it displayed, how it should be stored, whatever, and you can reuse it for any content types. You can store the, the textual body of a content item the same way uh, in pages, in blog posts, in widgets, in I don't know where. So this is the flexibility of content types. We will see even users are content items. So theoretically you could attach the same body part to users and then users uh, would be able to, for example, write a short biography of themselves through this body editor. So it makes functionality very well reusable. Uh, so that's about content parts again. Uh, sorry if you already understood everything, uh, but I think it's it's important to uh, rehearse it probably again because it's very important. So we now see the widgets editor, but we have some foreign options here like the zone and the layer and even the position. Uh, well, title is, is something simple, so we don't bother with that, name either. So let's, uh, let's explore what zone and layer is. So let's go back to the widgets uh, list, so widgets uh, page. You can see we have a lot of boxes and everything here. Now what is that? First of all, we have a layer, this here. Now what is a layer? A uh, layer is practically not, nothing more than a container for widgets. So what we see here is the list of widgets that are on the default layer. Uh, more precisely, those widgets are on the default layer that are such greenish. So the main menu is on the default layer. The first leader aside, second leader aside, and third leader aside widgets are not on the default layer, but they are listed because this is a merged view of every widget in the system, every widget uh, saved. So the only widget we have on the default layer is the main menu. And uh, wh why this matters? What are, why do we have to have containers for widgets? Now, if you go to the front page, the, the menu widget is here. This is the menu widget, this is the menu of course. And it should be displayed on every side. So if I go to the the password change site, it, it should be still there, the, the menu. This is achieved with the default layer, because the default layer is set up in a way that it should be active on every pages. If you go to edit here, we will see the layers editor. As you can see, well, layers have a name, a description, and the layer rule. This layer rule is interesting because this is a, this is a logical expression. This is evaluated on every page load and if it's true, then this layer will be active and every, every widget containing that layer will be displayed. So as you can see, this logical expression is quite simple here. Uh, I guess 
the outcome of this this rule here will be true, probably. I'm not sure, but I think it will be true. So that means that this layer will be active for every page. That's why we see it's, uh, see the menu on every page. Let's see something different. So these widgets are not greenish, so they don't belong to the default layer. If we go back to the editor, we see that this first leader assigns uh, widgets layer is the home page. So let's see what the home page is about. Let's go back, let's select the home page. As you can see now, the main menu is gray, so it's not on this layer, and these uh, uh, triple widgets are greenish. So we are on the correct layer. And now let's see what the home page layer is about. Now its layer rule is a bit more complicated. We can use some, uh, some expressions in these layer rules. It's um, a Ruby inspired syntax. It's something very simple. It has uh, just a few features. One of them is this URL expression. So this will be true if this URL pattern here matches. Now, as you can see, it only matches if we are in the root, so on the home page. Uh, that means that, uh, or that's the reason why these widgets are not displayed here. But we can turn it around and we could say that the home page layer, despite its name, should be only displayed on the change password page. So if we go here and if we change this URL and I save it, we should be able to see these widgets here. Yeah. So these widgets now appear here, and if we go to the home page, they don't appear here. So we just changed how the uh, how the layer is evaluated. But uh, this is uh, this is very bad to have the home page layer match for the passwords password modification side. So I will just set it back. Uh, you could add new layers anytime. There are some other uh, default layers uh, bundled uh, in the default recipe. So for example, what we see here, this is not something defined in the code of Orchard. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the piece of software that defines how widgets and layers and everything works, nowhere is it defined how a default or an authentic layer should look. This comes from the recipe. So remember when we installed Orchard, we, we have chosen the default recipe. Now this default recipe contains configuration for the layers too. So there, those layers are, are saved. And now that we have run the recipe, these layers are set up. The other examples are that the authenticated layer only matches for authenticated users. Uh, I think it's, it's quite simple that it's, it's called authenticated. Oops. Uh, there is also an anonymous layer, i.e. the not authenticated users. And as you can see, you can use the not keyword if you want to negate an expression. So basically these layers here are, are samples for, for every combination of these simple expressions you could use. Yeah, there is or also, so you could say uh, well, we could actually do that. Uh, we could we could make the home page only match for authenticated users, and uh, to do that, we could uh, we uh, we should write that and authenticated. So, and or or you can use both. Uh, uh, yeah, respectively. I think this won't uh, or if this works. All right. Uh, so if you go to the home page now, uh, nothing, well, what should, what is on the home page? No, that's okay. And on the home page we should, shoot, we should see the widgets and it's not, <laughs> not displaying. All right, I've made some mistake and what's that? But it seems that despite I'm, I'm an admin and I'm logged in, I'm not authenticated, or I just made a spelling mistake. So the, the ultimate problem solving in programming, of course, is uh, copy-paste. 
So <laughs> if you now go to authenticate it and copy this, so I don't make a spelling mistake, and go back to the home page and say authenticated. And if it's still not working, it's still not working, uh, then I will uh, I will research why it's not working because it should and tell you on the course page. Probably it's a different syntax. Yeah, uh, that's actually interesting because if you fill in this uh, expression, it should be validated. So if you make a mistake, a syntactical mistake like I have done here, yeah, it says it's not valid. Uh, apparently I've made a mistake that wasn't validated because I haven't used these parentheses here. Uh, this URL expression works that you can either use parentheses around the URL pattern or not. If you use this expression solely in one expression, uh, you should, uh, you you shouldn't use or you mustn't you don't have to use parentheses. But if you use multiple URL expressions, you have to use parentheses. Now it, it looks like that that uh, even if you use it together with authenticated, you have to use parentheses. So yeah, this now works. Now one notion uh, before we wrap up this uh, this lesson is zone. Now, as you can see, we have a list here with header, navigation, featured, before main. These are zones. We have a small helper uh, image here that I will just open uh, separately so we can see. This is also a, a map of the zones, the, the layout of the zones we have uh, in the theme. So, as you can see, these zones are areas of the layout. So the header is naturally on the top. We have a navigation. The navigation is below the header. So this is the header here. Navigation should be this roughly. We have many, many zones. And for example, these are the, there are these triple first, triple second, triple third zones. <coughs> so I think these should be these. Widgets, and if we go to the widgets editor, we can also check those. So let's go back again to uh, our beloved first leader aside widget, and you can see that indeed it's in the triple third zone. So, just to wrap up, if you create a widget, uh, you should put it in a layer, so that's a container that will decide whether the widget is active for a current page, and you should put it in a zone. That, we, uh, that will decide where that widget will be uh, put into the layout. So let's create a widget uh, just quickly and let's add it to the SI first zone. So if you go back to our little map, you can see that the SI first is on the left hand side of content. So if you put a widget there, it should appear somewhere here. So let's go here, uh, select SI first, add and uh, let's create a new widget. As you can see, there are some widgets already in the system. Uh, these are content types, of course, as we have uh, seen when I search for widget on the, in the content type list. Uh, what's really important is the menu widget. We already have one for a main menu, of course. Um, you could take a look at home uh, uh, at its configuration. It's, uh, it's not something complicated, <coughs> uh, but and if we already have it, uh, have it defined for the main menu. But another uh, quite important widget type is the, <coughs> is the HTML widget. So let's go back to the to SI first and select uh, HTML widget. Now the HTML widget is uh, a simple widget that contains just a value. So as these triple widgets here. So let's uh, <coughs> let's give it a title like uh, test widget and add some text. You see our zone is the aside first. We could choose the layer. Uh, let it be default now. 
We could fill in the name. This name is just a technical name and it will be used as a class for the HTML element. So let's try that too. Let's call it test widget with a dash. And let's save it. If you go to the site and reload it, here we have our test widget. If we take a look at the HTML source code, well, it's uh, it's quite uh, complicated for Orchard actually because there are many uh, wrappers, many containers. Uh, by the way, you can see that uh, Orchard puts this uh, generator meta tag into the to the layout it, that it tells us it's Orchard. And now if we search for test widget. We can see that uh, here we have our our widget, our widgets code. Actually, the widget itself is uh, just this article here, and its class is widget test widget. And so, uh, Orchard gives us uh, many CSS classes in the markup that we can use to target elements. Uh, this is one option to uh, this is one option the technical name that is uh, also surfaced on the admin side uh, but we will take a look uh, into all those in detail when we when we will learn about theme development um, widgets are are that um, you can create also widget content types from the uh, dashboard by the way so just a quick glance uh, at the HTML widgets content type definition again. Uh, if we go here, you can see that it also has a stereotype. Now the stereotype is kind of a category for content types. Widget means that this content type is a widget. Um, this can be modified here. So you could just go on and create a new content type here create new type, blah, 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 and set the stereotype as widget, and you'd be able to use that content types items as widgets. This is, uh, the stereotype is really just a category, so the widgets module knows that it will only, only list uh, content items here uh, that have the stereotype widget. Basically, that's it for widgets. And that's also enough for today. So what we have seen was uh, the, the basic content management and site management uh, configuration options and, and knowledge you have to really know about Orchard. This was just a quick overview. Uh, we haven't gone into real details yet, but this is the UI, so you can try it at home. Uh, do try it at home, it's not uh, dangerous. It's, it's just a UI, so click through it and try what Orchard does. And next time we will take a look uh, into other more complicated aspects of the admin UI, and later on we will uh, take an approach on development. Thank you for your attention. Bye everyone. <laughs>